Executive salaries are set by the Board of Trustees after review and discussion of the recommendations of the Board's Compensation Committee. The Committee's recommendations are based on a number of factors, uh, including individual and institutional performance. Well, what was that? What was that? The Committee's recommendations are based on a number of factors, individual and institutional performance, achievement of key goals, and competitive market data for comparable institutions in the region. Generally, Dartmouth-Hitchcock's executive salaries and benefits are at the mid-range when compared to the same position at peer institutions. Bullshit. They're the highest in the state. Wayne Granquist. Chairman of Dartmouth Hitchcock's Board of Trustees says, We don't believe at all that we are in the exorbitant range of executive compensation. Why the hell are there two presidents both making over a million apiece? And they can't pay their bills? They gotta cut their staffing? At Fletcher Allen Healthcare in Burlington, President and CEO Melinda, Melinda Estes commanded a significant higher salary, according to tax records. In 2009, Estes made $1.4 million in wages, non-taxable benefits, bonuses, and other compensation. Her base salary was $836,000 plus. Fletcher Allen has a different, different leadership structure with only one president instead of two, as is the case at Dartmouth. So they can afford to pay them a million dollars. Also, every institution differs in how it pays out bonuses. An executive might meet a long-term goal one year that entitles them to a significant bump in pay, but the same benchmark can only come up every three years. So in any given year, there would be a wide vari variations in the level of bonuses and increases in total compensation that are affected by the way the compensation program is structured. <laughs> it's very hard to make co comparison. It's apples, oranges, and mangoes and a couple of bananas thrown in. She has not received a pay increase since 2009 because of the financial challenges. <laughs> Jesus Christ, she doesn't need one. And they're laying off how many nurses? They're looking at a potential $100 million shortfall because of recent changes in the way the state reimburses for Medicaid. But, but, she makes how much? A million and a half? Well, she supposedly doesn't make a million. Yeah, okay. How do you look at that? Between benefits wages bonuses yeah she makes a million and a half several dhmc employees contacted this week declined to comment for this article saying they feared retribution for speaking to the press one employee who spoke on the condition of anonymity said she was disappointed to learn how much top executives at dh were making i think it's ridiculous yeah Nobody's worth a million dollars. Nobody. We're a 1.2 billion organization, said Grandquist. Executive compensation is a piece of controlling health care costs. What the fuck? You can compensate them, but you're broke? It's not the major piece. That sounds like uh, Bank of America and all them. The institution is the, of the... An institution of the size and complexity of Dartmouth is very challenging to manage, Granquist said, adding that the board believes Formella has performed her job well. They've been very fortunate to have had a strong and stable leadership for many decades. Formella, who joined DHMC as a senior nurse executive in 1999, has contributed to that stability and should be compensated accordingly. <laughs> Granquist said he'd be surprised if hospital employees saw it any other way. <laughs> we did not think that raising her salary would send a negative message to employees. You can't give the nurses an increase, but you can fucking pay 13% to 
on 700 and some thousand to start with. How many nurses would that hire? Yeah, a whole hell of a lot for what shit they pay.